a day I'd start another war Wouldn't care who we were fighting Or what we were fighting for Who the fuck is Nathan Bell? <laughs> I ask myself that question every day You know, I've never had a problem working That's who Nathan Bell is You're looking at a guy the American dream that they actually talk about, not the American dream, of, not the bullshit American dream where you get handed money by your parents and then pretend you worked really hard to turn it into derivatives. I'm talking about the American dream where when you're 11 years old and you're in an agricultural area, you work and you buy a bike. I'm talking about that dream. As I look out at what's happening and I just say that's what's happening. In this movie that's coming out about me, <laughs> which is a little strange. Um, I say that um, what I do is bring uh, news of other things to people. I'm on glass himself on fire in Vietnam. I'm watching on our first black and white television. A monk burns himself to death in Vietnam and I get the American blues. Well, the title of the new album is uh, Red, White, and American Blues. Um, and then in parentheses, uh, it couldn't happen here. And I think the significance is that it couldn't happen here makes perfect sense because we are a tipping point away from becoming a banana republic. I, I did a lot of albums on my own, and some of them are just acoustic guitar and voice because I believe that's the true test of a song, if it can be sung without an arrangement. And all these songs can be. I've never left a line in that I didn't like, and I've never finished an, a line just to finish it. I am, uh, most of them survive on paper without the music, and that's a a sign of something. Plus I learned to write from the blues and you don't waste words. The songs will stand up alone, solo, but the album got to what I wanted it to get to, which was, it sounds like it was recorded like it was recorded, three days, two guys playing in a, a band that, that, that makes sense as a cohesive unit. And obligations to see to. So here's the coolest thing about the record. I asked Frank, producer, and Brian, you know what I'd really dig? Patty Griffin sounding on this because I could hear it in my head. And I love Patty, but I didn't really expect it, to be honest with you. You, you know, it's like Bull Durham a little bit. You spend a lot of time as the, the home run hitter catcher in the minors, you don't expect the majors to, to step in. Frank gets Patty. One of the greatest text messages I've ever gotten in my life was, Patty Griffin's gonna sing on your record. Then, I had mentioned uh, Regina McCrary and a couple other people for the, the sort of more swampy, let it bleedy type sounding stuff, and then Regina's in. The last one is through, through my friend Ethan Ballinger, who's a hell of a guitar player. We end up with Aubrey Sellers, who has this voice that sounds like it, 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 it's both uplifting and came straight out of the grave at the same time. And I'm standing by the light With no key for the locks When you say political album, you scare people off. But it's a political album in the sense of Picasso was a political painter. No, you got to stand for what's right, or you're only going to be here once. The songs are about something more, and if you pay attention, you might you might hear something about something. Hopefully, the hooks are good enough that to keep listening.